What a treat to be at West Avenue Elementary on a beautiful sunny day. I'm so glad to be with our students here. Where are my third graders? Oh, right up front, powder burn section. All right, where are my fourth graders? In the house and fifth grade. All right, awesome. Well, as Mr. Alexander said, my name is Rusty Garrett. I'm the chief meteorologist for station KWTX News 10 in Waco. We serve Waco Temple Colleen in all of Central Texas. And today, we're gonna do a program that we call Project Tornado. My job today is to empower you, to arm you with life-saving information that I hope you will not only learn and memorize, but I'm hoping that today you will pass on this information to the members of your household so that your entire family will be smart about storms, high winds, hail, tornadoes. We'll touch on a number of different subjects. And where are my, where are my teachers? Teachers, oh yeah, let's give the teachers a little prop. Boys and girls, today, to help you, and we're gonna to try to cover in a short period of time a lot of different subjects. And to kind of help you remember what we talk about, I brought each of you one of my brand new Project Tornado books that you get to stay, that you get to keep home, take home and keep. And teachers, if I could impose upon you, teachers right now, to come up and count out the number of books for your students and hold on to these books. Boys and girls, you'll get them at the end of the program or at some point after our session is through today. Now listen to me, listen to me. This booklet is full of really cool stuff. Inside this book, inside this book is information that will help you understand things like the largest storm on planet Earth. Does anyone have a guess by raising your hand what is the name of the largest storm here on planet earth let's see thank you for raising your hands before you speak the largest storm on the planet is called what Tornado. no the largest storm on the planet starts over the water over the seas over the oceans and it's called uh, how about this student right here yeah, baby, that's what I'm talking about. A hurricane. Now, when you get your Project Tornado book, I want you to turn to the hurricane section, which is on pages 10 and 11. And on page 11, you're going to find all of the names for tropical storms and hurricanes between now and the year 2018. You'll be able to turn to page... Turn to page 11 and you'll see if your name is on the list for a tropical storm or hurricane in the next few years. Let's see, do we have anyone in here named, mm, let's see, let me find one of these names here. Do we have anyone here named Gonzalo? No Gonzalos, okay. Do we have anyone in here named Kyle? Do we have a Kyle here? No Kyles? Okay, how about an Alex? Do we have an Alex? No Alexes? Oh man, I'm striking out. How about Matthews? Do we have any Matthews? Ah, 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 ah. Hurricane Matthew! Yeah, baby! Well, anyway, when you get your book, you'll find the names on page. I can't hear you! I heard you that time. Also, in this hurricane section, you'll learn a lot about these powerful storms. When I was your age, long ago, they only named tropical storms and hurricanes after girls. <laughs> now, I don't know if it was the girls that got upset or if it's the guys that said, hey, wait a minute now. Back in the 1970s, the WMO, the World Meteorological Organization, decided to alternate. So from A to the letter W, 
we go from boy, girl, boy, girl, all the way down the list, A through W. And that's how storms get their names. After they become a tropical storm, they get a name. And you'll learn a lot of other really cool stuff in the hurricane section of your Project Tornado book. Also, some really cool experiments that you can do in your free time, like how to make lightning in your mouth. I'm not kidding, it's in the book. You can learn how to make thunder in a soda can. I'm not kidding, it's in the book. You can learn how to make icy cold frost even on a blistering hot 100 degree West Avenue elementary day. I'm not kidding. It's in the book. You can learn how to separate the glorious rays of the sun into a multitude of colors right before your very eyes. I'm not kidding. It's in the book. But most important of all, you can learn how to survive severe thunderstorms, hurricanes, and tornadoes. I'm not kidding. It's in. That's right. It's in the book. So when you get your book, please do me a big favor. Read it. Study this information. There's all kinds of cool stuff in here about all types of weather. But here's what I really hope that you will do with this book. I hope, first of all, that you'll take it home, not leave it on school property, not leave it buried in the desk between a bunch of pages of paper and books that you keep here. I'm hoping that you'll take this book home. Please don't leave it on the bus. Don't leave it on the back seat of the car. Take this book home and use it as a teaching resource. I want you all to become teachers for your family. You can go over with this book all of the information you're going to learn today with your family so that each and every member of your household will be tornado smart like you're about to be. Because tornadoes really are the focus of what we're going to talk about today. We know that tornadoes are inevitable. They happen all the time here in what we call Tornado Alley, which runs from Texas northward up through the Plain States. And truly, boys and girls, unfortunately, it is not a matter of if a tornado is going to happen somewhere in Tornado Alley, it's more of a matter of when. And what you do or do not do in those precious moments before a tornado strikes can mean the difference between life and death for your family. So I want you to listen closely as we go over a few basic tornado facts, and then I want you to try to memorize some places of safety that we're gonna emphasize about where you need to be and go should a tornado warning ever be issued for your neighborhood. And let me quickly say that tornadoes are not thinking storms. They don't prey on a particular area. Uh, one time I was out at Baylor University speaking to a second year college group and one student very seriously raised their hand and said, is it true that tornadoes are attracted to the aluminum metal that mobile homes are made out of. That is a myth. Tornadoes do not think, they do not specify a particular area. They are random forms of powerful weather energy. And when they do strike, they can move quickly. And experts say that if a tornado stops somewhere near where you are, you might have as little as 30 seconds or less to get to the safe place inside your home. And we're gonna talk about that in a moment. Uh, hurricanes, as I mentioned, are the largest storms, but truly, here in Central Texas, we really only worry about the rain associated with hurricanes when they move into the Texas coast. We worry sometimes more so about the storms that are forced inland by hurricanes because those storms can sometimes generate tornadoes. Back in 1980, a long time ago, Hurricane Allen moved into the Texas coast down near Corpus Christi. With Hurricane Allen, which had wind speeds well above 100 miles an hour, not only did it blow in all that rain and all that wind, but that one hurricane produced 60 tornadoes in Texas. 
60 twisters. So hurricanes can cause us problems, but we're more concerned about tornadoes that happen right here. And again, what you do or you don't do, the knowledge that you have and the preparation mentally that you obtain can really make a difference in you and your family being safe. So let's talk for a minute about some of the basics of tornadoes. First of all, they happen more frequently during the springtime of the year in the months of March, April, and May. In fact, late April and May, the peak time for tornadoes in Central Texas. But let me tell you something, and I want you to hear this. Tornadoes here in Texas can happen any time of the year. We've had winter tornadoes. We've had tornadoes in the fall, in the autumn, which is what we're in right now. So you have to be on guard just about all year round because when storms do happen here in Central Texas, they can produce high winds, hail, and sometimes twisters. And tornadoes can happen at any time of the day or night. Now, it is a fact that most twisters happen during the hottest part of the day, between about three o'clock in the afternoon when you're getting out of school and about the time that you've either started supper or finished supper, between three and about six or 7 p.m. That's the window of opportunity for most storms to peak with their strength and their power. And while those storms are definitely deadly and dangerous, some of the most unsettling storms are those that happen late at night when you're <laughs> sound asleep and slobbering on your pillow. Those are the storms that can really catch you off guard. So I want to impress upon you a good idea. How many of you have ever had maybe a, a mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, brother, sister that had a birthday and you and your family were trying to think, oh man, what can we get dad? What can we get mom for her birthday? Let me tell you that the best birthday present that you and your brothers and sisters could put your money together to buy for your family or for a mom or a dad is a weather radio, a little device that can help you in the middle of the night when your entire family is asleep. When storms happen, this little weather radio, which is just a simple little device that sits on a bedside table or on the kitchen counter or on a dresser, never makes a sound during beautiful weather like this. But when storms happen, especially storms that can carry high winds, hail or tornadoes, that little quiet weather radio device will sound an alarm when a severe thunderstorm, flash flood or tornado warning is issued for our area. And that will wake you up and give you time to get to a place of safety. What a great investment that every household should have. And where do you find these weather radios? How many of you have ever been to Walmart? Or Radio Shack, or Kmart, or uh, a drugstore like Walgreens? All of those places carry these weather radios and they're not expensive. So think about telling your family the importance of a weather radio. And that's all you've got to say when you go up to the counter at Walmart where all the electronics are. Just say, I want to look at some weather radios. They'll know exactly what you're talking about. And that little investment could save your family's life someday. All right, first of all, let's define what a tornado is. Now, a tornado, again, is not a thinking storm. It is a random form of intense weather energy that spins around on top of the ground. And because it moves along on top of the ground, if you have the good fortune of having a basement or a storm shelter below ground, I mean, that's a no brainer, that would be the best place to be. But I don't have a basement or storm shelter at my house. How many of you do not have a basement, don't have an underground place to go for safety? That's just about 99.9% .9 of us. You may put your hands down now, but I've got good news. Even if you don't have a basement or storm shelter, you do have three places above ground inside your home that afford you and your family safety during the high winds of a storm and particularly a tornado. And we're gonna talk about those three places in just a moment. But first of all, let's define what a tornado is. A tornado, very simple. Are y'all pretty good at repeating what you hear? Yeah. <sighs> Teachers sometimes at a fault. But I want you to try and repeat the definition of a tornado when I give it to you. 
Okay? I'm going to say it, and then I'm going to point to you and give you your cue. A cue is kind of what they use at the TV station when I'm about to go on television to do the weather. The floor director in front of my camera will stand with his or her hand up in the air like this, which means for me to get ready. And when the director gives the floor director the cue, that person does that to me, and that's when I gotta go live and in living color on television. So I'm gonna give you the cue, the cue and when I give you the cue, you're gonna repeat back to me the definition of a tornado, just like I say it. Easy enough? Are you up for the challenge? Yeah. Okay, listen closely. The definition of a tornado. I'll say it all the way through, and then I'll give you the cue, and you'll repeat it back to me. Okay, here it is, listen closely. A tornado is a violently rotating column of air attached to a thunderstorm and in contact with the ground. Go! Okay, all right. I'll tell you what. I'll make it easy. A tornado is a windstorm. A tornado is a... Windstorm! One more time! Windstorm! Yes, but truly, technically, it is a violently rotating column of air. It is attached to the bottom or the base of a powerful thunderstorm. And for it to be a legitimate USDA grade A Texas tornado, it must be in contact with the ground. That's right. Now, when, when we have storms around our area, inevitably I'll get phone calls in the Doppler 10 Live Forecast Center from frantic viewers who call me and they'll say, I'm seeing a tornado and I'll have to try and calm them down and try to qualify if they're really seeing a tornado or not. And they'll say, oh, I'm looking up at the sky and I can see it. It's swirling up in the clouds. That is not a tornado, even if it looks like one. And a tornado is wide at the top and narrow at the bottom. Even if it looks like a tornado, if it's up in the sky, it's not a, tor a tornado or a twister, it's called a funnel cloud. A funnel cloud is in the yeah. A tornado is on the yeah. Now you know the difference. So if you ever think that you've spotted one, be sure you can see that twister on the ground. And normally you can see debris flying all around, grass and dirt and rocks and concrete, building materials swirling around. That would indicate that twister has made contact with the ground. If it's up in the sky, it's a... I can't hear you. Thank you very much. Now, when you get home today, I want you to be sure and impress that fact upon your family. Because, you know, your family may be one of those people that call me, freaking out, when they only see a funnel cloud and not a tornado. So be sure you understand and make them understand Funnel clouds are in the sky, but they can sometimes mature and lower, and when they reach the ground, they're not funnel clouds anymore. They are a tornado. tornado. Okay, now, if you have only 30 seconds from the time that a tornado warning is issued, and let me quickly say there are a couple of different things that you'll sometimes hear and see on television. When the atmosphere outside is bubbling up, when thunderstorms are erupting, and there is a chance that one of those storms could produce a tornado, many times you'll hear that a tornado watch has been issued. A tornado watch means to do just what it sounds like. It means to watch for the possibility of a tornado. It doesn't mean that a tornado is happening. It doesn't even guarantee that one will happen. A tornado watch just means that the atmosphere, that the recipe is just right for the possibility of a tornado. But when you see or hear a tornado warning has been issued, that's business. That means that a tornado has either been spotted by a storm spotter, a trained person that knows what to look for and reports it back to us and the weather service, or maybe an indication on Doppler weather radio has indicated that a tornado is on the ground. That's when a tornado warning is issued. Now, tornado warnings are not issued for cities or towns. They're issued for counties 
Who here, by raising your hand, knows what county we are in right here? Now, again, the other day when I was at Baylor, I asked that question to some college students. Baylor is the seat of educational knowledge here in the Central Texas area. Young lady on the second row raised her hand and she goes, I know, I know. So I said, okay, what county are we in? She said, the United States of America. No, that's the country. That's the country we're in. What is the county that here at West Avenue Elementary we reside in? Thank you for raising your hands. I'm always fussed at when I go to speak at schools from students who say, you never call on anybody in the back. So I'm going to call on someone at the back here to tell us what county, what county we are in here in this part of Central Texas. How about, how about this beautiful young lady in the blue outfit? Can you tell us what county we're in? Waco is the city that we are in. What county, county we are in? That's important to know because Tornado warnings are issued for counties. You need to know what county we're in. All right, how about someone in the middle? How about, how about, uh, how about, how about this student right here with the yellow? She looked down, she goes, oh, well, that must be me. What county? You're not in yellow. Look at your, look at your shirt. How about this? Did you have your hand up right here in yellow? No? She goes, no, I didn't have my hand up. Okay, how about, how about this student right here? What county? Nope, not West Avenue. That's the school. That's the school's name. It's important to know what county you live in. How about, how about this student right here? Say it again. News Channel 10? No, that's the TV station I work for. All right. How about, how about this student right here? What county? The world. No, the world. Not the world. The, the name that I'm looking for starts with an M and has a little C. Muck, 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 muck. How about, listen, 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 shh, shh, listen, listen. How about, how about you? Waco, Texas. No, nope, Waco is the city. Oh, come here, come here. All right, everybody sit down. What's your name? Jones. Tell everybody what county we live in. Give her a hand. Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Boys and girls, we are in McLennan County. Why is that important to know? Because if a tornado warning is issued, it will not be issued for the world. It won't be issued for West Avenue. It won't be issued for Waco. It will be issued if it's in this area for what county? Yeah. McLennan County. Boys and girls, no matter where you live, when you grow up and move away and have five or six babies, I know, that's a scary thought. But someday you might move away from here, wherever you live the rest of your life, always know what county you live in because a tornado warning is issued for particular counties. And when that warning is issued, you've got to know where to go and you've got to get there fast. And now as we wrap up our time together, these next few minutes are the most critical. I want everyone sitting on your bottoms I want you sitting up straight with your eyes and ears pointed right here at me. I want your hands in your lap. I don't want you to say anything or make any noise that would distract, distract the people near you because this is the most important information that I'm about to pass on. This is what I want you to memorize and be willing to share with your family when you get home. And that's information regarding the places of safety inside your home. No matter if you live in a, an apartment complex or if you live in a two-story or one-story house, 
or if you live in a barn, you need to know the places of safety if a tornado warning is issued for your area. There are three places of safety. Scientific research of homes and neighborhoods that have been hit by tornadoes have discovered some very important information about particular parts of your home. There are three places that scientists say offer you and your family a degree of safety. Getting to one of those three places quickly is absolutely critical for you and your family to survive. Now we've already established, I don't have one and most of you don't have a basement or a storm shelter. That would be the best place underground. But above ground there are three places. One is the best place of all. One is the very safest, according to research, of homes that have been hit by tornadoes. One part of your home withstands the winds of a storm or a tornado better than any other place, and it is the bathroom. The bathroom. The bathroom is the number one place above ground inside your home, and here's why. If you could see inside the walls of your bathroom, if you had x-ray vision, kind of like uh, The Incredibles. You ever seen the movie The Incredibles? Who was it that had x-ray vision? Uh, the mom? Didn't the mom in The Incredibles? One of those people had the ability to look through things. If you could look through the walls of your bathroom, hidden away where you can't see them, are the best types of protection for you and your family against the high winds of a storm or a tornado. Yes, inside the walls of your bathroom are pipes, plumbing made of metal or sturdy PVC plastic. The pipes that run down through the walls of your bathroom underground and up into the sink in the bathtub do two things to protect you and your family from the high winds of a storm or a tornado. First of all, those pipes in the walls of your bathroom will help to support the wall structure when the winds of a storm or a tornado slam into your home. Not always, but very often, people who take cover in interior bathrooms on the lowest floor walk away with fewer injuries because in the walls of those bathrooms are pipes. They help to hold the bathroom walls up when other walls collapse. The second thing those pipes do is they will sometimes stop or slow down flying objects that are carried like missiles by the winds of that storm or tornado. Those pipes can sometimes stop or deflect some of that flying debris. That's the second thing those pipes do. So, a storm or a tornado warning is issued for your area. Stop what you're doing and go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. Now, don't go to the bathroom and, until you get to the bathroom, please. Everybody here potty trained? Okay, good, good, good. The bathroom is the number one place above ground because of the pipes in the walls, making it the number one place, an interior bathroom on the lowest floor. And I always get asked, should we crawl into the bathtub? Yes, if you want to, make sure that your pesky little brother or sister hasn't left the water in there. I would hate for you to drown, survive the tornado, but drowned in the bathtub. But the bathtub walls are made of porcelain or plastic, and that's another barrier between you and the storm. So a bathroom is the number one place because in the walls are... I can't hear you! Second best place inside your home is a small confined area called a closet. But not just any closet, boys and girls. When you get home from school today, I want you to survey your home. Try to figure out which closet in your home is closest to the very middle. The middle, most interior, centrally located closet is the second best place. Why? Well, it's a small, confined area. And in most homes, closets have no... And you want to stay away from windows and glass when there are storms and high winds and tornadoes. So a closet comes in at number two because it's small, confined, and especially if you find a closet close to the middle of your home. Third place. 
third best place inside your home is sometimes the location that is pre-designated in schools that I visit during tornado drills. It's that long, narrow corridor leading off into bedrooms, bathrooms, and closets, the hallway. Hallways are the third place. If there is time before the tornado strikes, close all of the doors that lead off from the hallway. Get down low, providing the lowest possible profile. On the way to a bathroom, closet, or hallway, if there's time, remember this. Protecting your head. Grab the blankets, the bedspreads, and the pillows from your bedroom. Carry them into the bathroom, closet, or hallway. Cover yourself with the bedspread or the blanket and place those pillows over your head and the heads of your family and stay down low. Now, when I was a kid, they told us to carry a mattress into the bathroom or a closet or a hallway. Can you imagine me trying to manipulate a 60 to 70 pound mattress down the hallway and into a bathroom before a tornado strikes? Boys and girls, leave the mattress on the bed, but carry the blanket, the bedspreads, and the pillows. Quickly get into a bathroom, closet, or hallway. Cover yourself, especially your head and your upper torso area, that will protect you against some of the wind and the debris that's flying through the air. Simple things that you can now know and do. God forbid if we ever have a tornado coming. So let's quickly go over what we've learned today. First of all, we've learned that a, a tornado must be on the... Yeah. A funnel cloud is in the... Yeah. There are three places of safety inside your home if you do not have a basement or storm shelter. The number one place is the... Yeah. Because in the walls of the bathroom are second best place inside your home is a but not just any closet. It's got to be a closet close to the third best place in your home hallway. Bathroom, closet, hallway. Bathroom, closet, hallway. Boys and girls, when you get home from school today, I want you to become the teacher for your family. I want you to take my Project Tornado book and I want you to drill your family about the safety that's needed in your home during a weather emergency. Inside this book is everything you'll need to know. Be sure you pass this information on and help keep our Central Texas area safe. I wanna thank our teachers for letting me share some time with these bright third, fourth, and fifth graders today. I also want to thank Mr. Alexander, the principal, for making that information and invitation available. I want to thank my friends Dale and Jesse with the Waco ISD for shooting some of the video for this. And I want to thank my friend Jeremy Stepp, who works at Channel 10, taking pictures.